we are here to bring you everything and anything surrounding Porsche. I'm Mike. I'm Aaron. And this is P-Car Talk. All right, welcome to another episode of P-Car Talk. I'm Mike. And I'm Aaron. Special guest, Jan Halen. Here we are at Cafe Racer in Dunedin at his shop. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for coming. Yeah, thank you, man. We're going to talk to you a little bit about your race history your small business ownership here with the bikes i mean the cycle shop excuse me i say bikes because i'm american i apologize (laughs) (laughs) but um we're going to get into all that and then we're going to talk about the you know the great season that you just kind of wrapped up with and crazy race season you're going to be at it in a month again so (laughs) so back to back essentially right yeah so that's the, the the race world essentially but uh let's go and get started you know we know about it because we're we're motorsports geeks. But tell us a little bit about your history, and what kind of drove you to get into racing, and how did you get into racing, and all that motorsports? Did you grow up that way? Like, what really kicked that off for you? I, I kind of looked into it. Um, my dad was always, I, th- I guess, my dad and my uncle they were always motorsports fans, mm-hmm. but um, we never we never had uh, had anyone in the family do the do what I'm doing right now. Uh, nor did we have the the funds the funds to do so. So my my dad was just a big motorsports fan, still is, and um, I yeah I, I looked into it through a friend of mine when I was nine ten years old. One of my best friends in uh, in school at the time, he uh, his dad was was like a club you know club racer, very amateur, uh-huh. uh, but he. Um, uh, he had a go-kart, like a homemade, you know, little go-kart with a small engine on it, and we'd drive it around around his house. And that was kind of the first... Um, That's cool. You know, that was kind of, you know, the, the first... Uh, yeah, your little the taste. First thing. Yeah, Wheels the first the taste of it. Yeah. yeah. And then from there, um, uh, about a year or something later, my friend, his name was Tom, he, um, he finally got, like, a, a real go-kart. Mm-hmm. And then we only lived about 35 minutes away from the from the track in Genk. Uh, it's one of the biggest uh, go karting tracks in okay. uh, in Europe. Uh, lots of history there. Anyway, so that was only a half hour drive. And uh, once he got his little go kart, we started going on, uh, you know, maybe once a month or so. And then soon, soon thereafter, yeah. I, you know, then I'd the, start, the yeah. addiction yeah. was there basically. Yeah, yeah. So then, then it was all about <coughs> convincing my dad that that was a you know a good idea. <laughs> So yeah, then maybe another year went by, and we finally, uh, or I finally got my first, uh, my first go kart. Came on a little trailer. We bought like a trailer and a go kart. Mm-hmm. Came with like a package thing. It was a, it was an older like used, uh, used frame and used motor. But that was the, yeah, that was the beginning. And nice. from there, um, that was, what year was that? Ninety, nineteen. Yeah, 1990, 1991, mm-hmm. and uh, I've never done anything else since. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, wow, it was... Uh, that's pretty yeah, cool. Just, like, at was, such a young age, that's kind of yeah. what you did, and then it just kind of manifested into... Oh, it was, it was in the beginning, my dad... So, my mom and dad, when we uh, when we first got the go-kart, because uh, they were pretty pretty strict at home, and mm-hmm. they said, all right, well, uh, you got your go-kart now, but uh, you have to make sure that it's always clean, ready to go, and... Um, that's good though because they they, they taught you you discipline in a way too my responsibility but then uh, instead of being the prima donna race car driver you're like all right i'm done with it i'm out of here (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. but they they didn't know at the time then what uh it kind of went the other way so every night my uh my mom would have to scream from the house we had a little uh, workshop in the back of the back of the yard and then she'd tell me like go on it's bedtime yeah so i would still be working on my go-kart so yeah, so they actually had to pull you out of there because you were... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's all I did, you know, before and after school. So it was a lot of fun. It's all, it's all I wanted to do from, yeah. that, uh, from that point forward. And That's awesome, though. That's an awesome story just to be... That's the beginning, and, like, you're still doing it. Like, you're basically... You're doing your dream. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been... I've been very fortunate and fortunate to have met some, uh, you know, some amazing people along the way. And... Um, yeah, I really got my first. Uh, what really got me started is uh, is about four years later, three four years later, in um, I was driving. So I started with my dad um, doing some club races, mm-hmm. and then we did some uh, some of the national championships. And and from from the very beginning, we were winning and we were winning championships. But then um, it kind of got to a point where 
that's about as far as it was going to go uh, financially. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, even though I was young, my dad had said, like, hey, this is kind of, you know. Yeah, this, this is the is, cap. This is it, you know. Yeah. Uh, and that was, uh, that was, uh, I, rem I remember him uh, telling me that, and that was, that was disappointing because um, there was a lot of good momentum and things were, you know, mm -hmm. uh, things were Well, going clearly, yeah, well. you were a good driver. You were winning, yeah. so, yeah. So, um, but yeah, then, you know, my dad did everything, you know, he was, he did everything uh, in his power to, to make things happen or to make some deals to, uh, to get me to do something else. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, one of the, um, you can call it like the, like the, like the Mercedes or the, or the Ferrari from, uh, in, in go-karting, mm -hmm. they, um, they reached out to me and they, uh, they asked if I, if I wanted to come and do a test with them. Um, how old were you when that kind of happened? That happened when I was, um, just when I was about to turn 15. Okay. And, uh, it's a team called, uh, GKS. They're out of Belgium. And, um they're um in carding you know they're yeah, yeah. they're like they're uh like world famous they've had a lot of uh, a lot of big drivers uh come through there over the years mm -hmm. and um yeah worked um well got the test and um i mean it all went well the, yeah. the, the guy obviously the the owner uh who's, who's become uh they've they've all become family since then mm -hmm. He um, he basically told my uh, my mom and dad that if uh, and I didn't notice at the time, so it was really cool that, that this all happened over the summer the summer break. And uh, so he said, well, he can if he works here during the summer, then he can also he can drive, he can test, he can you know do some development nice. work. So I did uh, I did that for two months. So in, in Belgium, the um, the, the summer break goes from uh, June, let's see. Every school kid's dream. July. You're like, wait a minute, I get to work in a race car place yeah. and I can go test too? Yeah, yeah. So it was July July 1st until August 31st. So it's two months. And then every day, my dad, every morning, every night, he drove me up and down, up and down, up and down. And then um, Good for you, August, Dad. A lot of support. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And then August 31st came and that was going to be the last day of of. The summer. Off, off the summer and mm -hmm. then it was back to school for me and then um, you know then we were going to go into let's say the, the season with this new team for the first time but they called me um, you know they'd, they'd obviously been setting this up um, throughout the, the two months and then they called me into the office on, uh, on the 31st and, um, and the boss you know who's, uh, who's Paul Lemons he uh, he said to me, and he was like, he was a very impressive, you know, a very impressive guy. Uh, I was very intimidated by him at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, he said, "Well, he said, what do you, uh, you know, wh how, wh what, wh what would you say if, uh, you know, if you could stay, you know, if you could come back tomorrow and just yeah. stay, keep doing what you're, you know, what you've been doing for the last two months, and." Uh, and I just looked, I didn't know what to say. I mean, of course, yeah, that's what I wanted yeah, to do. But exactly. how, how, how unrealistic was yeah. that, yeah. you know? So, um, but yeah, they told me then that day that, yeah, that, um, that I didn't have to go home that night. And then that was it. That's so cool. Yeah, From there, um, yeah, I got a, my first professional contract when I was 15. They, I was actually paid to, you know, to drive go-karts from mm -hmm. that point on. And um, stayed with um, stayed with that family, the mm -hmm. Lemons family, for the next uh, five years. And um, yeah, we traveled traveled the world for for the next the next five years until I was like nineteen, late nineteen. Wow! Um, it was the most amazing to this day. You know, the most I was gonna amazing say the rock star time, like you know? life of like growing up as a teenager and traveling and racing and learning so much and seeing so much. You probably were just. You know, yeah, I mean, didn't uh, you say rock star? I think it I was. I don't mean uh, it like that. I don't mean it like oh, like <laughs> I, you know what I mean. Like everybody dreams. For no, that, no, I guess. no, you know no, no, I mean? for like, sure. And I, and I would like, not. Uh, of course, I would do it all over again. But it was extremely, extremely hard work. Uh, mm -hmm. We worked, you know, we worked um, no less than six days a week, and yeah. most of the time we worked seven days a week, and um, it was always go, go, go. Mm -hmm. And and I, I mean, I was young. It's all I wanted to do. I never. Yeah. For five years, but they I were never, the best for a reason, probably because they put the yeah, work yeah, in, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I never thought then. I never thought, oh, this is a lot of work, because uh, it wasn't. You know, it was just, you know, it's yeah. what what I wanted to do. You were passionate about it, fun. and yeah. um, 
yeah, it was it was it was it was incredible. I uh, worked with some amazing guys. Uh, met met a lot of like I said, a lot of people that are to this day uh, good friends or, or like family to me. Mm -hmm. And it's also how I learned to speak uh, speak English through yeah. my uh, oh, yeah, my true. teammate yeah. uh, Jensen Jensen Button. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, man, that is a like you said you you that's a pretty good description how you fell into it because like really hard like, work yeah <laughs> well it starts with the carting right the neighbor kid has a carting thing he goes with that and then he gets his own cart and then and he works with this team and then they like give him this hey a, a kind of an apprenticeship for the summer and then they want to keep him on and it's like that's pretty awesome how all of those doors kept opening for you to like basically put you where you're at today. You know, like each, each, each step you kept going and going and going, obviously you probably had to perform or you couldn't just be there to hang out, but like you were good while you were there too. So that's the, that's another element of that. Right. The talent part. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess the, 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 the talent and the driver is always, always there, but you also have to, uh, you need the right opportunity you know, mm -hmm. to, uh, to, 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 yeah, to, that's a good that's a good point, to, uh, right? Like you know, to make it all work. Timing, timing's everything with that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, right? Because I'm sure there's probably a lot of great people and, and guys who didn't get didn't get a drive. It could have been somewhere, right? And could have done something and it's all timing, right? Like with where you were at, like who you were talking to and the opportunities that came up too. I think that helps a lot too, right? Yeah, I think to this day that is true, you know, like everything everything has to be aligned, um, you know, at all times to, to have a good to have a good career or to have a good season or to have a good seat. I mean it's always like I said, you, you it never stops, you know, from mm -hmm. you know you know, what is almost thirty years ago to now you're yeah. you're doing the same thing. Has it gone by pretty fast? Yeah, I mean too fast. But <laughs> Yeah, there's a uh, yeah. I mean, those the, the years in karting, those, those just they 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 just flew by. I can't even think of. It's like when uh, we got started, and um, you know, and yeah. there I was 19 and or 20 and and ready to go to, uh, you know, to the next uh, you know into cars to in Formula Ford. So, and then, so is that was that your next step, Formula Ford? Was that where you moved next to? Yeah, and that was a that was actually a really tough transition for me because. Um, I came from, you know, doing five years in, in, in karting as um, essentially a factory driver mm -hmm. and, and getting, you know, getting paid. I mean, it wasn't a lot of money, but, you know, everything was paid for and I, yeah. and I took home a little bit of money. And then um, then you got to go and do your first thing in, 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 um, in racing, car racing, and now you need money. Mm hmm so, so you're starting all over again. yeah so it was uh man it was a it was again I, I i would of course i would do it all again and if i ever have kids i hope they uh they get to enjoy you know something like that as well but that was it was tough i um i, I was home for like six um from the moment i i stopped um carding as a as a professional i was home for uh for about six months and at that time my brother was still living at home and uh, we were we had a i mean a normal sized house i'd say but mm -hmm. when i left the house uh my brother and myself i think we were still sleeping in one room mm -hmm. and uh, there was only two rooms you know on the second floor so by the time i got back he had taken up the whole you know, <laughs> second floor so you know there wasn't really any um, any room for me anymore so i had uh we had um uh, we had the attic where it was just a bear. You could see the, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the shingles, you know, through the, yeah. the rafts. And um, I had basically with the money that I'd saved up from the five years in carting, I made myself a room under the attic okay. and spent, spent everything but a thousand dollars on, on that, you know, on that room. Yeah. And uh, did it all, you know, myself and my dad. My dad helped out a little bit. Anyway, so now I had a room, and um, and yeah, a thousand dollars to my name. Yeah. Because I had, I had this big. Uh, it was this big um, uh, cylinder, you know, where you put your change yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. So that's the only thing I had left. <laughs> and uh, so I went to the bank. It was like roughly, it was like a thousand dollars. And then they said, "Listen, if you want to do anything in racing, you gotta back then. You gotta move to England. That's where it's all happening. And, mm -hmm. and everybody who's 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 any any anyone yeah. go, goes to England. So made some calls, and I mean, I had no I had no money, zero money, and um, somehow." you know, through, you know, the people that had helped me in karting and, and some people that I've met along the way, 
put me in touch with some people in England and um, basically just uh, packed up yeah. with my $1,000 <laughs> and, uh, and, and went to England. At the time, I had a, there was a, a car dealership, if I remember right. Yeah, there was a car dealership from in town and they had given me a car. So I did have a car. Uh -huh. So I drove to England and uh, got there, didn't know anyone got into a hotel and uh, basically from there just figured it out yeah. about a, I think about a week or so later, two weeks later, I didn't have any money <laughs> left. And, uh, but I told myself not to, you know, I was, you know, I was, I was old enough then. Like I was never pretty much from when I left the house when I was 15, I never really asked for anything at home anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there I was in England, you know, no, with with pretty much nothing, and I didn't really know many people. So the first two years were, um, yeah, were pretty tough. Um, I mean, so fun, like yeah, all yeah. fun, and but, yeah, we didn't have uh, we didn't have much. So picked up every job I could, and a little bit of coaching, and a little bit. I forget what we did. I, I, I uh, oh yeah, one one of the things I did was the I I brought. Uh, <laughs> I brought cigarettes into the country. Oh yeah, because that was a big, that was good. Uh, that was a good little business. <laughs> the the cigarettes were so much more expensive in England. So okay. I'd, I'd go to the when I go back to Belgium, uh -huh. I'd come back with a suitcase full of uh, cigarettes, and uh -huh. then hope uh, hope I wouldn't get caught at the at the border. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And then unload them at the track, and I had all my orders going. Anyway, oh, so nice. that yeah, so that's something. That, so you had to hustle a little yeah. bit, yeah. So that was, uh, yeah, that was good. And then that's where, so I met uh, Patrick, Patrick Long back in, uh, probably in, in 19, yeah, like that's 95 right, because he or 97. Over, went over from the US and was in England, right? Yeah, well, but for, we met in karting. So Patrick okay. was, so I was with a team from, uh, from Belgium. Patrick was with a team from, um, out of Italy. Mm -hmm. And so we, we met, I think in 97. And then we sort of, you know, became friends, but it wasn't until I moved to England, Patrick had already been there for a season. And uh, I was basically a year behind him on, as far as car racing okay. goes. So he had already done uh, a season in, um, uh, in, in British Formula Ford. Okay. And then what was going to be his second season, my first season, he was living with, uh, with a lady, um, is, her name is Eve. Um, anyways, this, this lady, uh, she was known, uh, I think, he, like Dario Franchitti. And uh, I mean, a lot of guys stayed at her place. Yeah. Uh, she would rent out the top floor of her house. Okay. And so Patrick, he so was, she was known to help out young yeah, racers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Patrick was much more connected than I was in England. You know, he mm -hmm. knew, he he already knew uh, a lot more people. So he um, he really like helped me out as far as you know introducing me to some some new people and and um, and also you know that's how we ended up living together for the first time. Yeah. So I shared uh, I shared the house there with him. Nice. And um, yeah, then to. Um, did, let's see, two years. Did my first year in um, in Formula Ford uh, with a private team, just scraping by. Uh, but I was the first. I believe I was the first guy to win a race with a with a private team in, in I think four years, because mm -hmm. it was all everything was dominated by Van Diemen and uh, Miguel at the time. Yeah, yeah. And so I managed to ra to win a race at uh, what was a new track, and it was Rockingham. Um, and that basically gave me the in with, uh, with Van Diemen, with the okay. factory team. Nice. And, um, yeah, from there did, um, the two, well, did the following season, uh, that must've been 2002 with the factory team. And between me and my teammate, we, we won, you know, the majority of the races and then I finished second, I believe in the championship. And then I ended up winning the, uh, the formula Ford festival, Nice. which, um, I mean, that was back then, that was a big deal. Yeah. Um, and that then gave me the opportunity to, um, uh, or from there, you know, at the Mercedes, the uh, AMG called me and um, they gave, uh, I was a Mercedes junior driver mm -hmm. for, uh, for the next two years. And is that how that kind of works? Like you have some success at some races and then a manufacturer or a team, one or the other, calls you up and says, hey, will you 
you know, obviously, test, but maybe they don't even like it. offer you yeah. right away, but they say, Hey, we want to, we're having a test. Want to see, can put you in the car a little bit and have a test. Is that how it kind of goes? And then they make a decision from there or, well, I mean, you, you hope that that's how it goes, but I mean, the, the reality, unfortunately is different. Uh, I mean, I was fortunate then it, it did, um, it did go that way for me, mm -hmm. uh, as far as Mercedes goes, but I can't really say that that, uh, at least not for me. And I think that's where, you know, timing and who you know, and it, it all. Yeah, like you were saying earlier, like it's it, there's a political aspect to it too, right? Like whether. Yeah, I think if I look back at my career, I think uh, a lot more, uh, or I think the biggest thing is is who you know and 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 who you know are, are the people yeah. that are, are, are surrounding you and, and, and like who, maybe who they know. It, and, and I'm just reaching and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Is it also like maybe other people vouching for you? Meaning like, yeah, he's fast. I've seen him race before. He's good. Like somebody who has an opinion that matters when somebody asks them, they're like, what do you think of that guy? Like a young guy, it's coming up. They're like, I think he has a lot of potential or no, I don't yeah, think he's. Absolutely. And that, that's, that's all about, yeah, the people surrounding you. I think that's, um, if I look back at my kind of career and, and, and early on, that's what I had missing, you know, I didn't mm -hmm. have, I think, you know, I think I had the talent to, uh, to do anything, you know, anything anyone, anyone yeah. else was doing, but I didn't really, given my, my history with my family, there was mm -hmm. no, you know, like, yeah, like no, the, no in, the in crowd, was, right? Yeah, the in crowd. The, yeah, there was no, we had no connections, I had no connections, so for me, it was all, it was all pure racing you know like any anyone i met met along the way was because was because of my results yeah and um, in a sense i mean it sounds bad but like we all know from different sports and all you know all different types of sports actually if you don't have a background like that you actually have to be that much better to yeah, even get an opportunity yeah. a lot of times because that other guy who's can super connected can win occasionally but the guy who does nobody knows you almost have to be there all the time, like almost podiuming all the time to be like, all right, this guy's the real deal. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if um, if today if I if I if I agree with that 100 percent anymore. I uh -huh. think uh, for me, at least what what is my reality? Right. And I think different people, you know, you come uh, you grow up going through different uh, different forms of motorsports and different, you know, different countries, different uh, um um, I mean, there, there's so many, so many things you can do, right? Mm -hmm. So, but for me, I think it's, it's a lot of it is, is about who you know and whether you know them or the people around you know them. I think, um, I think that is, that, the, makes sense. that is the biggest thing. Yeah. And, and of course you have to have the talent, Yeah. but there's but a lot those of those two together. Are yeah, big, yeah. But there's a lot of guys out there that have the talent and that don't necessarily have the, um, you know, have the contacts mm -hmm. to, um, to, you know, to take them to that next step. So, um, yeah, anyway, so, yeah, you hope, you hope that, that, that you can do everything based on, uh, on results and on your talent. But um, unfortunately, that's, uh, that's yeah. not how it works. So then you're a junior driver at Mercedes for a little bit. Take us from there. Like yeah, so th that, that for me was a very unfortunate time um i of course was um was very excited to be a part of that it's the same uh school uh that that you know schumacher went through and mm -hmm. and and you know you see all the you know the young you know the young guys today like um um uh, you know George Russell yeah, and yeah, you know, we Russell, just talked yep. about him. Yeah. yeah. So I was I was given the same opportunity uh, at a at a you know at a young age to uh, to be a part of that school, mm -hmm. and um, uh, yeah I was I was one of I might be off one but I think one of five or one of six drivers. Okay. Uh, I was in the same uh, the same year as uh, Christian Clean and Marcus Winkelhock. And Got it. Bruno Spengler was so, there. Amazing opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, this was yeah. like uh, an opportunity of a lifetime. And um, what uh, the, the unfortunate thing for me was, fortunate, unfortunate, they had, and I might, like I said, I might be off one driver, but if there were six drivers, five drivers were already allocated mm -hmm. and they had been tested, screened for, for, for almost a year long. And um, when I won the festival, there was one spot left open and they never, you know, there was no, let's say at the beginning of 2002, they never looked at me as a, as a candidate for that, you know, for, uh, for the AMG, um, you know, uh -huh. Young Driver Academy. 
and then I won the festival somehow you know we got together and I got and then things got, changed I because that, of that yeah, yeah I got that last spot but what that did for me was that it was the very that was going to be the first year I don't know how well you know you guys or, or the listeners uh, how much you know about Formula 3 in Europe but that was 2003 was going to be the first year that Mercedes was going to have an engine in Formula 3 okay and so Mercedes had uh, selected I believe it was four teams, three or four teams, um, and they were going to supply the engines, and then they were going to supply the drivers. Got it. And so I was one of the, you know, one of those, uh, one of those drivers. And uh, the unfortunate thing was that because I was the last guy to come on, I was also put with the team that was, that was. Uh, I didn't notice at the time, but I guess it was a it was a deal that uh, that kind of that came together at the last uh, at the last minute. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the teams was uh, it was Prima, Muka was one, and um, uh, ART, which is you know they're still I think in yeah, uh, yeah. F two now. Uh, so those were the three top teams, and okay. they between the three of them they won the majority of the races, and then I was I was put with a team uh, called Collis. Uh, Colin Collis, you know, mm-hmm. you probably yeah, yeah, know yeah. him from uh, from Le Mans and a mm-hmm. little bit uh, from F1. But when I was there, uh, Colin, uh, he had just made his debut into motorsports. So he had never, he came from, uh, he had a, a family uh, like dentist uh, <laughs> yeah, practice. Yeah. And that so was, that was honestly, that was his background. So he had no he had yeah. zero experience in racing um, yeah, no team principal experience none of that stuff nothing was happening. no nothing 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 <laughs> he was as green as one could be and <laughs> and then we went into what 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 was going to be um the most competitive you know uh field and series in europe yeah up against teams like you know uh, yeah. ART and Prima very well and all seasoned, that. very well and seen, well seasoned the, the, opponents. The, you know the long and short of it is is that um, you know we money back then you know between you know Mercedes and then the team call us there was a, there was almost too much money mm-hmm. and and but there was no um, um, yeah there, there there was no structure yeah. And um, you know, in in a in a series like that, um, yeah, again going up against those, those big teams, it was um, yeah, it was impossible. Yeah, and, I was gonna say and, that's and, a big mountain to climb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. yeah, yeah, no, this you know, like it, it's well, I mean, the same. It's the same at every. Yeah, in, in you can't trade that same. kind of money for experience and development and all that. It's kind the of same stuff. in IMSA. It's the same everywhere you go, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, you cannot you know come in and 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 think that you're gonna. You're gonna be as good as as a team that's been doing yeah. this for for ten or ten plus years. Like the seat, the saying goes all the way around. You need seat time, right? And seat there, t- yeah, and, and there was and no the t- seat time there. Well, I, I mean, but more so. I for don't the mean team. like you, I yeah, meant yeah, like from a team, yeah, like yeah, even absolutely. even speaking yeah. as a team as a metaphor of like they needed yeah. seat time, which they didn't have. They were green, like you said, yeah. and they were coming into it, and it's like yeah, and so yeah, unfortunately, that also. I had a guy, you know, who was looking after me at the time, and he uh, he had, you know, the best intentions with me, and uh, but he also he was, he wasn't super well connected, mm-hmm. but midway through the season, it became clear that we um, we had no shot at doing anything in that car. I mean, we were consistently, I mean, we were consistently. Um, I'd say a half, half, half second to a second off the pace, which was enormous. I was you know, about that to say a, that was a big gap. Yeah, so we lot. would always qualify around P15 out of like 30 cars, whereas mm-hmm. the other cars would always be uh, up front. And um, yeah, so that that also hurt the relationship with Mercedes. Um, mm-hmm. We um, um, by mid-season, you know, they were, you know, the team. The team was making up, making up excuses as to why, you know, why why the performance wasn't there, and and then they had to, um, you know, th- there were weekly, monthly meetings with uh, with Mercedes where, you know, things, uh, you know, they came out with, I guess, with their version as to why the performance wasn't there, and 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 I I had my version, yeah. right? 
So anyways. Yeah, because then at that point, people are starting to throw people under the bus, right? Yeah. Because then they're like, like why aren't you guys performing? And it's like, well, it's not us. I think today, if if you'd ask anyone today and they look back, you know, 20 years ago, of course, they would all say the same thing now. But not, you know, not 20 years ago, you know, that was, there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot at stake. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it was just bad, bad timing for me to be, to be put in that car. I mean, I was racing against guys that I'd been, you know, beating and winning from for, for 10 years. (laughs) And now all of a sudden I was, you know, I was, I was kind of in the, in the midfield. Yeah. And you're um, like, it's definitely not me. Yeah, I'm that, better than all these guys. You need to prep this car better. Yeah, that mentally had to mess with you, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was it was actually a tough, uh, pretty th- pretty rough year. And mm-hmm. then uh, I did get a we did a shootout, and um, at the end of that season, in 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 a good car, you know, one of the with one of the good teams, and I ended up being the quickest driver there. <laughs> but no but the relationship was already you know it was like already the, too late to yeah, salvage it basically yeah. at that point. So. Yeah, so that that like I said, if I think that is the one thing, if I look back at my career, that is something that yeah. kind of stalled my, you know, uh, everything. But like that you I said, that was a good me. point. You, I'm going to reference back to what you said before. It's momentum based, right? Like everything's momentum based. Yeah, you don't know even where it's going to go. You know, even like the cliche of it being racing because racing is momentum based. But even like your career could be momentum based too, right? Where it's like, all right, you got to keep winning, being successful, and it's even just that one glitch of a year can throw you totally off course right yeah i mean yeah i i think everybody you know everybody has their story but that's you know that's mine that's what happened to me i think yeah, yeah. Uh, i think without that or or if maybe if i would have been if i if i'd have been surrounded by um by some other people that maybe had a, a better relationship with 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 mercedes or yeah i, I think things could have could have been so different because uh, I think at that time, you know, we were kind of, you know, as a driver, if I look back, I don't think, uh, you know, you were as, as, as fast as you were ever going to be, you yeah. know, and, and we had proven that we, and, and, um, so yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's life, I guess, you yeah. know, sometimes, um, sometimes you're, you're in the right place and sometimes, yeah. uh, sometimes you're not. That's very true. Yeah, absolutely. So, after after that formula three like your duration of your two-year mark what ended up happening after that for you well so i did my two years did a little bit of formula three formula 3000 which is the the gp2 or or f2 now um and that was uh, that was kind of short-lived and that was based that was because of money Mm -hmm. um like i said i didn't i never had any funds to you know to, to, to go do things like that. So then in, um, so that was towards the end of 2004. And then 2005, Renault was, uh, was starting up a new program. It's, it was called the, um, uh, the Renault, uh, the World Series by Renault. Okay. And it was basically an all, uh, a race weekend with all, with only Renault, all run by all run by Renault. Mm-hmm. It was uh, they had um, some uh, touring cars. They had um, uh, single seaters, multiple single seater classes. Um, anyways, I got I got put in touch with some people uh, to go run in um, in that series, and I took I did that. It was a change from what I had been doing. Because uh, up until up until that point, I'd only done uh, single seaters. Okay. And then this was going to be a year um, in um, in touring cars, or, or it was more. It was like a flat bottom car. They had a ton of downforce. It was actually it was closer to like a, to a DTM car. Okay. Was and that a challenge uh, to go from open wheel to yeah. that? That was just about to ask you when you because you're doing a lot of open wheel driving, and then you go to this. I, th- I think. At that at that time, I don't think it was a I don't think it was a big transition. Uh, that car was still it was a very light high downforce okay. car, um, but I did that because I knew with the team and and the people that were involved that I had a good chance of winning the championship. Mm-hmm. So I did that in I did that in two thousand and five with the um, uh, with, that, with with my eye on coming to the US and okay. doing a champ car, mm-hmm. Indy car. Um, so I did the 2005 season, uh, the European Championship, 
won the European Championship and then that whole season because it was kind of an easy season for me uh, everything was you know well taken care of mm-hmm. I got a good you know I got a good paycheck and I was able to uh, focus on on uh, you know 2006 and putting together a deal uh, mm-hmm. to come here uh, to the US and um, and yeah and that's 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 how it happened worked really hard throughout the year and and we had um we had a sponsor lined up uh, to come and do a season here in uh, in Chemcar, which uh, uh, which uh, I ended up doing with uh, with Dale Coin in my first year, uh-huh. and uh, that was actually a really um, a really fun year, um, amazing experience, and um, I was fortunate fortunate enough to be uh, to be teammates. It just happened to work out that way, but I was teammates with uh, Cristiano D'Amada. Who had just come back from F1, so he had just finished his stint with uh, with Toyota. Yeah, and of course he had won. Did he win the the, the IndyCar championship yep. once or twice? Yeah. I forget. I think it was twice. Yeah, and um, so he was my he was then my teammate at at Dalecoin, which uh, which was, I mean, I could not have hoped for a yeah, better teammate. Yeah, just about you know, to say. We had all like... the experience, and I came in as a rookie, so uh, learned a lot from him and. I think at the end of the season we were 50-50 on like qualifying and, and race results. So I had a good, you know, mm-hmm. I had a good season. Um, and then Cristiano's, you know, he uh, he, uh, he he very quickly became uh, one of my close friends. He's uh, he's an amazing, you know, amazing guy. And yeah. we also share the same passion for uh, for bikes yeah. for cycling. Yeah. So we had a we had a really fun season. Um, you know, being on the road together and and. Yeah riding and riding and racing yeah yeah um and then um yeah then the next uh, the following season which was going to be 2007 okay yeah i uh i started well i didn't um i didn't start the season with uh, with conquest but uh, we had been working all uh, all all through the winter to um to uh to be in the car with conquest with mm-hmm. eric bachelor yeah yeah and we had that, you know, there was a Belgian uh, connection, and there was some good momentum. I had a couple, um, uh, some companies from Europe that were uh, that were supporting it. That was also the year that we that we had two races mm-hmm. over in Europe. So yeah, a lot of good stuff going on. Uh, and when we finally started the season, we were we were pretty competitive right uh, right from the start, and. Um, uh, yeah, I to this day I think that was one of the you know one of the best performances that uh, that I think we ever put together as far as you know uh, a total you know team effort. We yeah. we were a team with you know relatively small budget compared to uh, you know Newman Haas at the time yeah. was the, was a big team uh, and Roo Sport. And yeah, towards the end of the season, we had a car uh, we could run, you know, top three mm-hmm. um, to do all the fuel saving we needed. Um, be on the same strategy as you know Sebastian Bourdais was. Yeah, uh, yeah. He was the guy to beat at the time. So we had a really good program, and um, Eric did a really good job putting, you know, putting a, a good group of guys together. And then um, the following season, we were we were ready to do a, a full season with with you know a full budget. Uh, it was gonna be. I was. I, I think everybody was really excited about it, and and uh, Eric put a lot of uh, resources into developing the car over the, um, you know, during the off season, mm-hmm. and that's when the um, that's when the merger happened. Uh. That's when IndyCar and Champ Car um, got back together, and what it did for me is we went from you know Eric being in a really good spot, um, and and us looking at a, a really good season to where now they had to they had to go get two new cars you know now they had to yeah. you know they had to get cars parts i mean you know the whole the yeah whole they had thing. to buy the whole everything and it just uh it just put the whole the, the whole the budget went uh went comp- completely yeah. um out of out of the window so so there I was, you know, without a without a seat. Yeah. Uh, the opposite problem at Mercedes. You don't have any money this time. And yeah. You yeah. Talent. Yeah. So so yeah, and then from there I think we um, maybe try to hold on to that a little too long. If I if I think back now, but um, 
yeah from there started focusing more and more on um, you yeah. know on, on endurance and uh, gt racing yeah i'd already done some you know at uh, during my time from i think 2005 i did my first uh, real uh, endurance race 24 hour race but then yeah now we're 2007 i believe yeah and um yeah because really, in 08 um, weren't you at you were at rolex in 08 with brumos weren't you was that 08 I was in um, with Dempsey. No, that was later on. Was my that first, later? Yeah, so my first year. Was that eleven then? Two thousand eleven. I believe. Okay. Well, no, I think it was later even. Because you raced in that their last twenty four. Yeah, I did. Hour. Yeah, yeah. I with, did their at, very at, very yeah. last race. Yeah, yeah with Brumos. Because um, I remember seeing you in the Hurley documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, that's Jan. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a really cool experience too. Yeah. But yeah, that's. Uh, I think it was two thousand and two thousand seven, two thousand eight is when I really started focusing on uh, on on endurance racing. Okay. That uh, my first year was in Grand Am with um, with JDX. Okay. It was a full season, uh, in what was uh, the GTC category then uh-huh. in a Porsche, and um, um, yeah, had a good had a good season there, and that's also where my where the connection with Porsche started. Mm-hmm. All uh, I mean, a lot of that was also held by uh, by Patrick. You know, uh, he's obviously at that time he'd already been a, a factory driver for almost yeah. ten years, I think. Yeah, that's so true. Uh, he's always been a good you know a good supporter and a good friend. And um, yeah, we were able to put some put some deals together left and right, and then. Uh, finally, kind of landed with uh, with um, with with Wright Motorsports, mm-hmm. and did uh, did my first year there with um, you know with Madison Snow. Yep. Uh, kind of two seasons, I believe, and then um, yeah, that's really like pretty much from there on. Uh, most all of my work has been with uh, with has been with uh, with Wright, mm-hmm. and so they've become uh, you know they've become like family now, yeah i was so. gonna say you've been yeah. with them for a while and then you know what the what the going back and forth you know some of the challenges you know so you, coming up through your career you know karting and all that stuff you're a one-man show did you once you started racing with team like members did that become more of a challenge or was it just different for you no i don't think i think um Really, from from the time I was um, 15 years old, when I got my first contract there in uh, in karting with the factory, mm-hmm. that w- that was already a t- you know that was a, a real team. So it already had um, that team yeah, aspect yeah, yeah, already. Yeah. Just because you were the only one out there, it didn't really matter. It was already a team. Yeah, thing. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think the hardest challenge for me growing up was from doing five years in in, in karting at the at the highest level uh, with with pretty much unlimited resources. Then going, you know, making your first steps into uh, into car racing yeah. with uh, with a very small budget. Yeah, I was going to say and scraping the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, yeah, and and also the the the, the level of people and uh, and um, um, the commitment, you know, just everything. You're like at the very top, and yeah. then Where and then are you're just then you as go. Competitive as you are, and then you're back to the yeah. yeah and then, <laughs> So that's I think that was the toughest toughest part for me is just um, adapting to um, you know to that new um, yeah yeah just the the, the culture you know? yeah the yeah, culture yeah, of that yeah. 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 and then also coming from what I did in karting you know at such a high level with with you know with all these amazing people and then you go to then you go to England you know and and just the English culture. It, just that by itself, you know, is is was quite different yeah, for yeah, you. yeah, yeah. So, um, but uh, but yeah, but but at the end though, it was all it was all a, a, an amazing experience, and and uh, sure, I'd, I'd do a few things different if I could do it all over. But it's yeah. um, it's been a good, you know, it's been a good, it's been a good ride. I was gonna say yeah, and then let's take you know, obviously we fast forward some years, but clearly you know we, you're with rights and you know been racing with them for a while so at the level you guys you know had an outstanding season um how does that work as far as when you started taking seat in that and the gt3 they currently ran was did they just need another driver what did they want to try something different are are you allowed to elaborate like what happens in that situation you don't necessarily just have to say what your situation was 
But from us on the outside, when we see something like that, maybe in a midseason to say, hey, now he's with them and now they're doing next and they're doing good. Like, how does that even, do you just get a phone call and say, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Because you, I know you were already <laughs> at the time. track. It's not like you weren't there already. You were running another car already. Yeah, and then and I saw you and I remember the race when it happened because I saw you run that. And I was like, wait a minute. He just ran earlier today, and now he's in their car now. Like, <laughs> what's happening here? Like, yeah, it's been so. I'm sitting at home watching this. I picked up on it because I know who you are, and we follow you, and we like you, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, I text him right away, and I was like, "You see, Jan's running in the, in the GT3." He's like, "Yeah, I don't know yeah. what, what's going on. Like, why why is this happening? I don't know. I mean, this is cool, but like, yeah, it's been uh, busy weekends. Yeah, but yeah, no, I think with uh, with Ryder, it's a little uh, it's a little different where. You know, they they'd have me in the car, you know, all the time. But but there's there's sometimes there there sometimes it's a little more political. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's um, is there uh, like financially yeah, driven, contractual agree like no, stuff too. It, it's, no, it's not so much uh, like I've been there for so long. I mean, we we are like family. Yeah, and it, it's it just everything just, everything just has to come together for for all the all the right guys to be in the car. Got it. And. Um, and and it just doesn't happen every year. Mm -hmm. And and also, I'm 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 a, you know I think I'm a pretty loyal guy, and, and maybe you know maybe sometimes a little too loyal for my own good. Like mm -hmm. I've once you have that relationship, then I also don't spend a, a lot of time shopping around and yeah. Yeah. looking at other teams or other opportunity um, but i think there's something to be said about character it does that too though i mean that's that's a good thing you're there for the ups and downs so it doesn't matter right like so yeah I think, that's good. I think um yeah like i said I, I don't know if that's a you know good or bad yeah uh, depends on the you know i think there's a you can look at it either way sitting, right but yeah. yeah you can look at it either way right but no but what what i you know what is for sure is is that all everybody on the team um they would always want me on the team just like they do uh patrick mm -hmm. um but sometimes you know sometimes these things work out and sometimes they don't and mm -hmm. um this year it finally um you know it all came together again and um, is it neat to be racing with Patrick again and stuff like that? And just well, it's it's actually the very the, the the very first time that we've raced together. We've been we've lived together on and off yeah. for about ten years, and we've known each other since yeah since we were fifteen or seventeen. So this years is the old. first time you've actually been teammates. And this is huh? the very first time that we've. Uh, That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's only taken twenty years. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> That's what we were saying. Yeah, you guys both have this like long career and then like you guys get together after yeah. being in the business for so long <laughs> yeah so um yeah no that's been i i, I think and everybody y you know every everybody in in in, in imsa that does endurance racing it's they, they know this but it's it's so important to to have a team and drivers that um that are there and that have no agenda that are just there to do a good job and mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's uh, that's 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 yeah. one that's just one thing in in, in in this whole team effort that that makes it uh, that makes it work because there's no between myself and Patrick nobody you know we never sit in the truck and think oh you know we're not trying to prove it you know yeah prove what we can or cannot do in the car you know um, mm -hmm. against each other and that's uh, to win a big race like that um, any big race that's really important especially in endurance racing yeah. right like there's so, so much stuff to manage with the car yeah so you can't have that's why you, you know, don't it's, need to it's, manage it's, your ego too right yeah yeah exactly <laughs> and and we've all been there you know like I've you know I was young Patrick was young and, and but that's um, those things definitely make a difference you know you're now you're in a place where you know you you understand the sport and the and the team aspect a lot better than mm -hmm. when you were 20 years old and um yeah having having a team like that yeah. with uh, the team the drivers uh like i said it doesn't it doesn't always it just doesn't always happen even 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 when resources are not a problem you yeah. know you still then you still have to have the right drivers that that are just there to do a good job and not yeah. not have an agenda and and uh, yeah, and then, for like and then, good team chemistry, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then of course now since you know a few yeah. years we have there's BOP and driver ratings and oh, all yeah. that. So you know, that's, yeah, <laughs> the devil BOP. I yeah. absolutely hate B. I, I mean, I don't even race, but I mean, just being a fan, like it's unbelievable. This, it's just ridiculous. Like, it's yeah. frustrating. Like, yeah, I don't think any. I, I, it's 
you know it was put in place with the um with uh with them for you know with, with the right intentions and, yeah like um, and everything like a lot of stuff yeah, it's and, it, like um, thought of in a good intention but like when it develops and then gets put in play then it gets manipulized right like people are manipulizing yeah, yeah. strategy yeah yeah i yeah, know but it's it's become a very um yeah i mean it, it a lot of a lot of what we do on on the weekend is um is based around the bop i mean that's mm-hmm. not a secret you know that's yeah, yeah. that that is so for everybody and that is you know racing today and racing you know 15 15 years ago or, or, or prior to that uh it's very different yeah well the cars are so close now right and everybody's pretty good so the margins even if nobody had a bop on a car would already still be close but then when you put a bop now you're crippling certain cars and so you're really putting a detriment to certain cars in my opinion as a fan where you can totally see we are like, you know that car's quick, and then you can see them on a straightaway that there's no pull in that car, and you're like, it's because that car is carrying an anchor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that is shoot, that's such a tough conversation, and and yeah, I don't want to take you down no, that path because yeah, I know you're a driver, but yeah, I mean, no, and, but there's like, no doubt that yeah, like for us and fans, like we don't have any penalty to say like what our feelings on it, and it's. I'm telling you, like, you, and you don't need to comment on it, but, like, I, it, it's ridiculous as a fan to watch yeah. it because we're not stupid. If you watch motorsport and you're into it and you know what's going on, it's like, you you guys crippled this car. They're not even competitive because what you did to this car now. So how is that fair? Yeah, I, it's, see, it's such a tough it's such a tough thing to manage. And, and I think what is important to know is that for sure, you know, between the series, the, the, the manufacturers, um, you know they're all trying to do the absolute best they can mm-hmm. with the, with the tools they have available and 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 every car is different you know there you you even if even if 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 all the cars had the perfect bop you're going to go to tracks where a porsche is better than than a, mm-hmm. than than a mercedes yeah. or, or vice versa you exactly. know so it's it's an extremely hard thing to manage. I think it's uh, I think it's much what we have today, and and this is about this is this is about experience. It's about um, the technology available. I think uh, how we do BOP today versus you know five years ago is uh, we're in a much better place. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think honestly, if you look at uh, if you look at the IMSA season um, this year in in GTD. Because what is important to remember too, like one is certain cars are going to be better or perform better at certain tracks. But the second thing to think about is um, you have to look at the driver combinations too. Mm -hmm. Uh, You cannot BOP. um, And that sometimes is an argument, but you cannot BOP the the driver combination. So if if you are... Yeah, that's a really good point. (laughs) You got two... If you're you're on a a Porsche and you have, you know, a a Pro-Am, you know, lineup with a a true M driver Mm -hmm. and, and, and you have a, you know, you have an Audi that, uh, that has two, let's say, you know, pro drivers on it. Exactly. Well, you know, then, then naturally, regardless of, of how good the BOP is on the Porsche, uh, then naturally that, that the Audi is going to do a little bit better, you yeah. know, over a, on, on, on average. That's a great point. Yeah. So that's a great that, point. That's like I said, there, there's so and many things. And how do you BOP a driver, that, right? How do you BOP well, a driver that, that's combo? the thing. Like, like you shouldn't you, do that. You don't, but, you know, yeah. you, you don't want to, or at least the, the, the spirit is that, that, that you don't BOP, you know, a, a driver combination. But just to say that there's so much to it and it's, it is extremely hard to, um, yeah. you know, to, to have it, to get it right every, every it time. It seems like a pretty convoluted process from yeah. a, from a third party perspective. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Like on the outside, looking at this thing, it seems, it seems very like a dart on the wall type of situation. Yeah. You're like, yeah, Porsche this weekend. <laughs> yeah, but see, but that's Ferrari this weekend. It, it's, like, it's, it's, uh, I know I think, it's not that way. Yeah, I'm, I'm just making jokes, yeah. but like, it seems like it sometimes. Yeah. But I think it's, like it's I think it'd be um, even for you guys, you know, um, and you guys are obviously uh, big motorsports fans. But I think um, I don't think there's many people that really understand or know what goes into you know um coming up with a bop or making changes to the bop it's a it's a very complex you know um you know um yeah it's a very complex thing and and 
a lot of you know a lot of time and resources go into you know trying to make you know our, our come with with the, with the right outcome yeah and so it's certainly not you know it it's seems ne- like it's, it's never really it's never, complicated right it's never because random so exactly yeah. no i know that where you got the formula i know they have the mm-hmm. formula and you're doing they they have their calculations and they're doing the formula like okay this is x lap time okay car and this this is what it performed last year this is what it did here this is and and then it gets really really complicated i know that I'm just joking around when I was talking about like, yeah, and, I, and I'm just like voicing my frustration. Obviously, I'm Porsche biased, but you know, I'm sitting in there. I'm like, <laughs> you know, when I when when our car gets crippled at the track, I get really infuriated. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. and I'm sure even more so for you guys as a team and all that kind of stuff. And you're like, all right, we already have yeah. an uphill battle for X number of reasons, like you know that we haven't even gotten into as a team as the weekend you know you show up with the car this weekend you're like hey the car's a dog everything's fine everything's working but it's just slow here and then on top of that maybe you get a bop and you're like all right guys we don't have (laughs) we don't have a shot here yeah Yeah, and that's uh, again like that's where that's where you have to you know when when we go to daytona that's where the that's where the season starts and that's where you start scoring points and uh, a championship's not one at one track exactly and and you know you know we know i mean you can i mean we all know like this is going to be a porsche track this is not mm-hmm. this is a you know this is an Acura track absolutely so you know as you go through the season you you go to tracks where you're going to be stronger than others yeah. and, and you got to score your points there and that's it and and the, the places where you know that uh you may be you're maybe at a disadvantage or other cars have a, have a slight advantage on you you just have to come away with yeah. with, uh, with, best with the best points, can, right? yeah, the, the best points possible, and 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 that's what puts you in the championship posi- position. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about more recent, like Sebring, obviously. Yeah, disadvantages. Yeah, disadvantages <laughs> on that topic. So suspension was broken, right? Talk to us a little bit about how you had to manage the car as a driver. Like, what does that even like feel like? Does it feel like the car's just gonna kick out on you all the time? Like, does it feel like it's not planted and you're just kind of guessing? Like, what are you feeling from the driver's seat? Yeah, so we we um, we we had a really strong car, you know, in Sebring, mm-hmm. um, and um, you know, I think it showed in, in qualifying. And uh, but we were, I think we were we were happy, you know, uh, all the way through the throughout the weekend. Uh, we were we felt pretty good about the long runs. Um, and then yeah, we come to uh, to the start of the race, and luckily, you know, we start from pole, and we were, you know, we did a pretty pretty we had a pretty good first stint, brought the car in 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 the lead, but um, I I had said right away that the car was extremely hard to drive. Mm-hmm. Now I didn't I didn't I didn't right away think that something was broken, but. Um, and also because the um, uh, the track was the track was really green at the start of the race, mm-hmm. so something uh, my feedback to the team was that the car was extremely hard to drive. But I was thinking that maybe you know the track is green and it'll come to us. But the car was super loose, like extremely loose, like okay. off the chart loose. Yeah. And um, anyways, we we do the first stint, and and because we we came in. The way we did, we were leading the race and we had a big gap. Nobody thought that it was as bad as, as what I might have said. Yeah. And then uh, they just probably dismissed it as driver talk, basically. Yeah, it was just well, like, not not. I know, mean, I'm they, just they, being they, crazy they, again. Yeah, yeah, no, but it was it was it was you know <laughs> given given the lead that we had, it was it was hard to believe yeah. that that the car was was tough to drive. And then, um, yeah, the Ryan second got opinion in the car. Gets in yeah, the yeah, car. yeah. yeah he's third. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Ryan um, Ryan got in, and I think he radioed in after like five minutes in the car. He's like, "This," he says, "It's undrivable." Yeah. And then um, Ryan did. Uh, I mean, he drove an amazing stint. He did. Uh, he did three. I think three and a half hours uh, in one, you that's know, a, just oof. one, one long stint. That's brutal. Oh, it was. And, and with the car, the way it was, it was extremely hard. Yeah. And then, um, and then Sebring's brutal anyways. Yeah. So. It, yeah. But yeah, he did a really good job and did a really good job just managing the car the way it was. And then Patrick got in for the first time and he, yeah, he's, he's like, yeah, the car Same is, thing. He, he says, he says something, something's broke. He says, he said something's broken. Yeah. And then, um, on the next stop, he did a single stint 
and um, on the next stop they check the left rear and and the guys could just move the wheel up and yeah. down with uh, like with one finger you know you me so that. yeah That's so there was just no um, they must have maybe a broken the warm up but, you know it was hard hard to know but yeah, we yeah. definitely had so uh, basically had a broken car for 12 hours <laughs> yeah for 12 hours um <laughs> I, mean, I can't tell you like that's I mean of course out of all places that's but that just shows the you the grit place. that the three of you guys have too because yeah. like you were able to still pull out a victory with a broken car and a really really tough track because that track is even known to beat down cars clearly it broke that car at yeah. some point right yeah, yeah, yeah. like so <laughs> yeah I think that's <laughs> also a testament to the to the team and I mean everybody uh, that weekend I think um you know, one yes, the the, uh, the car was extremely hard to drive, and and it was very easy to make you know to make a mistake. Uh, but the team was just, I mean, they did everything they could to to improve that situation mm-hmm. uh, without without changing the damper. Uh, we thought about it, but um, I was I was. In but the, then you'd be the, guessing early, too. Once yeah. you do that, now yeah. you're back out on track trying to get that yeah, dialed yeah. in, right? So yeah, this was early on in the race. So maybe in an hour, hour four or five. I mean, I was I was the one dry. I was pushing for hey, let's let's get it out of the way. Let's stop. Let's put a new damper on it. Uh-huh. And uh, if we go if we go down two laps, we'll you know we'll try and get it back. Yeah. Because my thinking was I knew how how good we were. And but with the car the way it was, we were never going to be competitive at the end of the race. And and yeah, that's a smart strategy. You, know, you were looking so, at it. You're like, okay, we stopped seven hours. Yeah, we'll probably get a caution, a couple cautions. Yeah, we'll get it back if we do it now. So, but the team was like, no, this is uh, it's going to take too long. They said we could potentially lose three laps. And anyway, so we decided to, um, you know, to to just make some Run changes on yeah. the car so to, to try. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> To improve the to improve the balance, um, as, I mean, improve yeah. the balance. We were there was no balance. <laughs> there was no balance. <laughs> but but yeah. So then we yeah we we just we drove it hard the whole time and and I think the team we did a good job with the strategy. We had good pit stops mm-hmm. and always the whole race. Um, yeah, managed. We worked well. on on keeping track position. You mm-hmm. know, given the car that we had. And um, and at the end of the race, we were we were right there. Yeah. And that's how we were able to capitalize on what happened at the end of the race. But mm-hmm. I think, um, I mean, it just it felt so good because we had everything, just everything going for us, and and uh, a win was was all that was missing, yeah. you know, in that season. And yeah, there was just off, something, so guys, you know, like, there, you go into some weekends and you know it's all gonna, it's it's just gonna work out. Mm-hmm. And it was a Porsche for, weekend. That's what it was. For me, it was yeah. a Porsche weekend all around the world that weekend. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and 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 at the end, like I said, uh, it it came to yeah, us. Yeah, ELM and, guys won that weekend too, right? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, that was a really big weekend for Porsche all the way around. Even yeah, that, I mean, it was an amazing race. I mean, I. I didn't really know the significance of that until you and I just talked about an hour ago, but for you guys to run a 12 hour endurance race and the people who don't know have never been to Sebring, it is basically concrete slabs. It's an old runway. It is, (laughs) it is awful to run on even in the best car. I can't imagine having to try to drive that track on a broken car. I mean, you guys really, really put it in. And like you said, the team, like kudos to Wrights Motorsports as an entire unit. You guys did an amazing job managing that race, yeah. the drivers all the way around, because I'll tell you from a fan's perspective, watching the race, it didn't look like you guys were under duress. Like you guys looked fine on, on TV and in person, but it's interesting to hear that afterwards yeah, to be yeah. like, we this try, is what yeah. we were dealing with. We try to keep it quiet throughout the race too. So I mean, but yeah. a lot of people had already, even though we had not, said anything um you know in the media mm-hmm. uh but you could just tell from the t- if you were watching tv you could yeah, tell yeah. that there was something clearly something was wrong with yeah. the car they keep checking uh, that rear I don't yeah. know what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they keep but playing then, with the rear they keep putting tape back there <laughs> yeah and then yeah that last shoot and yeah that last stint that patrick drove was uh, that was pretty special yeah patrick man good defense at the end because we yeah. were watching it when we were at the track and we we're watching we we're watching him fending everybody off yeah. and i was like look at him man he's fending everybody yeah. off i was like it's one gonna, thing they're like, gonna do it they're gonna do yeah, it yeah it's one thing when you have the car and and then 
then you're just in it and you're battling. But we knew we were, you know, there was cars at that point in the race that were just quicker than us. So he, to do what he did, that was, uh, yeah, yeah, that was some good, some good work. Yeah. Pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. So let's transition. So you own cafe racer in Dunedin, which is a cycle shop. Um, from you enjoy cycling. That's one of your passions. How do you figure motorsports and cycling? How do those things go hand in hand? Because for, we pay attention to it, even though I don't cycle and we have a lot of friends that do cycle, but we know a lot of drivers cycle and a lot of teams cycle for exercise. Is that a team building exercise? Is that just something that people are passionate about? Does that help with racing also with drafting? Like just I have a lot of questions game. about that. They're I'm like interested bikes. in it cause I don't do it. So I'm, I, I always see motorsports guys like cycling. I, I see. Yeah. I think that's in, in the first place is just because it's a good, it's a good way to, uh, to exercise. It's a, uh, it's a perfect, yeah, it's, it's a perfect exercise for, um, you know, to get some good, uh, to get some good base work in, mm -hmm. uh, for your, uh, endurance. Um, and I think that's why, I mean, one, it's, it's a super fun sport. Yeah. Uh, cycling. Have you always been into it from a young age? You know, my, my family has a, has a background in, in, in cycling. Okay. Um, but when I was younger and still living in Belgium, I never, my uncles, they, everybody tried to get me into it, but it was just too cold in Belgium. I could never, <laughs> I could never really, you know, uh, get into it. But then once I moved to Florida here, uh, that's pretty much what I've done. Okay. Since I, since I moved to Florida. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just such a fun sport. And, and I think cycling in many ways, like the, the drafting and, the, and the, the strategy of it all, when you, whether it's, whether you're doing a group ride or, mm -hmm. or you're doing maybe some, you know, some amateur racing, it's just a lot of, um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And, uh, and even where you place the bike on the road, right? So your mind's always kind of thinking that, like yeah. if you have an open road, I should say, like, no, yeah, obviously no, but you don't it's, have Yeah, that. it's, it's definitely a lot of, uh, I can see like the, the racing mentality. Yeah, is, I can is definitely see there. why I understand why, because I can, I know enough about racing and I know enough about cycling. I could see why there's a lot of the, the lines get blurred there where it's yeah. like, okay, this makes sense for a lot of these people to be doing this. So I, I just, that I think it's pretty neat. Like you, you're a race car driver and you own, you know, a, a cycle shop as well, you know, which is awesome by the way. If you've never been here, you guys yeah. need to come down to down, uh, down here and cafe racer. They have like giant, awesome cafe in here. Awesome bikes in here. It is pretty, pretty awesome. Pretty. So how long has this been around for? Um, I think we're about three and a half years now okay. i think yeah since we um or you know since i found the location and you know um got it all got it all started mm -hmm. was this always a goal for you to own a cycle shop or did, was it so more of a recent development of like you i want to i want to do something with my passion also when i'm not racing or no it's actually if i if i if i think back now it's crazy that it took me so many years to figure out what I wanted to do because uh, I'd been saying for for years that that you know because racing you know of course I love racing and and that's my first uh, my first passion mm -hmm. and and it's how I make a living yeah um, but I since maybe t you know ten years ago I'm like I gotta I wanna I wanna do something else because racing too I like being I like being busy mm -hmm. and um, you know there's only so many races a year right and yeah. and you can only do you know there's only so much racing you can do in a year and for me that was just not enough like I, I had too much downtime yeah yeah at idle time and yeah and uh, I was like man what what am I gonna do when I I thought about it for. Uh, no kidding for like four three four years i was uh -huh. like what am i gonna do and I, I had all these ideas yeah and um uh, and then one day i was um i was just out here on, on the trail riding uh -huh. and uh a friend of mine said oh you hear this you know this this was a, a small a small bike shop before it was called uh, the Dunedin cyclery and they're like oh i've heard that the guys you know the guy uh is thinking about selling the business and i'm like ah that's, uh, <laughs> you're like that's this that, sounds that's like it. this yeah. might be the one and then uh yeah from there it all happened you know pretty 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 quick uh got to talking to the to the owner mm -hmm. and uh within a few months we had it all figured out and i took um yeah basically got the location that's what uh, that's what it was all about and then started from uh, started from scratch yeah i like the little race car touches in here too yeah. that you have mm. like Maybe to the layman, they don't pick up on it, but you know, 
there's a pretty obvious one out front with the the cup shell that's yeah. in the yeah. front of the shop. I really like that. So you, I love how you've blended, you know, who you are as a person with race car stuff that you've brought it into the cycling world in here too, and to show everybody, you know, you get your helmets and stuff. And then even behind the your cafe in there, I saw somebody has like a little sign, but they drew a little Porsche with a duck tail on it. I yeah. noticed that right away too. And I was like, Oh, look at that. Like I just pick up on all that stuff. And I think it's a really cool vibe that you have in here. I think it's pretty neat. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This was all, um, uh, so, so Patrick, um, he lives in, um, you know, Manhattan beach mm -hmm. and, um, or has always lived in, in that, uh, in that area. And he introduced me when he had his first, uh, I did his first, uh, lift cult, uh, event with him. Um, when it was when it was still very uh, yeah very when it was small. just the parking lot yeah. right and it was yeah it was um, you know he did it at uh, at Deus and uh, when I saw you know uh, when I saw the Deus um, shop or the store mm -hmm. I'm like this is a cool you know this is a cool concept and so a lot of my you know a lot of the vision or the ideas came from uh, from me visiting uh, Deus and then yeah. you know talking you know talking uh talking some with patrick and um yeah and this was kind of my you know this was my vision and then we had some uh some meetings at the track about what the name should be yeah and at the time i was i was racing with uh with mike shine also with uh you know with right motorsports mm -hmm. we had a we had a really good season together and anyways i've come to the weekends with some you know <laughs> with with so with a list of names and nice. then after the the driver debrief we would we would talk about what the what the name of the <laughs> of the bike shop uh, should be and then uh, yeah we you know came up with uh, with cafe racer that's pretty cool mm -hmm. so what's your family think since they have such a deep <laughs> background in bikes. cycling yeah. now that you have a cycling shop do they love it they're like oh my god you have a cycling shop that's so cool since our family loves cycling so is that like a cool thing for them too to be associated with i think now they think it's cool and they always i always i always do these things i think at first they always think i'm crazy <laughs> but yeah no no they they love it and they've also they've um, john has no idea what he's doing <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's wasting that's, money that's exactly what my mom said she says you've, you've she says, you've never had a bike shop. Like, how are you going to do this? <laughs> I'll figure it out. Yeah. Exactly. But, Mom, I'll figure it out. Yeah. It'll be fine. <laughs> but yeah, no, no. So it's been, this has been so much fun. Um, this is, this is just a hobby, you know. Yeah. Um, and of I course. love, I love taking, uh, you know, love taking care of the guys that work. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's really what's well, a cool what shop. This you got is all, about. all the employees, you know, they're here super yeah. nice. Everybody likes to be here. It's, you know, everybody's passionate. That's cool. That's what you want, you know. Yeah. Um, so cycling, road cycling, do you also do any trail riding at all? Do you enjoy that or just only road stuff? No, I do, but but of course we're not our ride here in Dunedin. It's not the place for yeah. uh, for trail riding. Uh, when I go, I keep, you know, one of my best friends lives in um, um, near Phoenix in okay. Scottsdale. And so when I go up there, we, we go out from uh, from time to time. But I do, I, I enjoy the, you know, the, 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 road, the road stuff and mainly because... There's a lot more strategy involved uh, versus if you're out on a trail. Yeah. You're basically, you know, yeah. it's all you're trying you, to survive. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's some strategy. Don't, don't yeah, get me yeah, wrong, yeah. but not no, as, not as much as, uh, as yeah. a, on a big group ride here. Yeah, on the, absolutely. On the road. Absolutely. So when you're when you're downtime, do you do group rides and stuff like that too around town, or are you solo ride a lot? See, this this year's been a, an odd year, but I'd say outside of apart from this year, mm -hmm. uh, I'm on my bike every day. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And uh, do all the group rides, and when depending on where we are in the season, I love I love the bike races. Mm -hmm. I, I actually I love I love a bike race just as much as I do a car yeah. race, and that's just at a at an amateur level. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the, I get the same kick out of yeah. it and, and the same adrenaline yeah. uh, rush. That's because you're just competitive. So, that's yeah. why. <laughs> like yeah, you just want to win all the time. It's funny because there you can't, like, of course, in a bike race, I can't. I mean, maybe you look out here and there, but there's guys that are so much better than me. <laughs> but it's I, I get a lot of, uh, it just feels good to do a good bike race. Yeah. And, and whether that's, you know, doing it for myself or helping a teammate out yeah. or yeah, I love. Uh, well, it's dual purpose, like you it. said, right? And I get it. Like it's fantastic exercise, mm -hmm. and on top of it, if you're competitive and you like to race, it makes sense. Yeah. Because then you're you're putting both of those things together. You're like, all right, I'm also getting in fantastic shape, and I'm racing, and I'm being competitive. Yeah. So it makes sense. 
like I noticed like Porsche factory drivers too. You see them cycling a lot too. I always wonder, I'm like, are some of those guys required to cycle? Do they all, do they all really enjoy cycling or some of them, is that mandatory exercise for them? I so wonder. A lot of them are probably riding because of me. Uh, <laughs> they're, uh, yeah, Logan's, he's a, you know, he's a good friend of mine yeah. and he, uh, I introduced him to cycling and then he, cause he's a, uh, now he's, he's totally hooked mm-hmm. on cycling and he since then introduced cycling to a few other guys. Yeah, so because I noticed some of them sometimes, you know, they'll post on Instagram. They're cycling together, and I was yeah. like, "Look at them! They're they're out there on the road, also strategizing, like trying to beat each other." Oh out yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> that, that's the whole fun in, 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 in riding. It's it's all about if you're if you're having a good day, then you're gonna stick it to them. You know, mm-hmm. any any any. Uh, any that's what Mike and his friend are like. We have some <laughs> friends at at road race. I live down by Pinellas Point, and it's a long long yeah. sweeper like lots of road out there and a lot of guys in st pete ride that right by my house I man a friend of mine he's like oh i rode 20 miles today or whatever and he's like but i was a dog today and, he, and his buddy that he rides with he's like yeah i had to like drag him home basically yeah. he's like <laughs> just sat in my draft like just behind me like oh like <laughs> yeah it's just so funny like some days you're on some days you're off but it is what it is right like yeah, but i mean it's, it's, it's also what you fun. put what you put in your body yeah, too it's all up to yeah. you yeah like you can <laughs> You put bad fuel in your body, you're probably going to run bad out there. So Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, cycling is a lot about training. You just need, you know, yeah. hours and hours on the bike. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, do you have anything else for Jan before I think I we took All up? my questions were answered, like the entire past. Yeah. <laughs> I know so much now. Yeah. I figured we'd take everybody through the journey of Jan and then we would go through. And I think it's a very interesting journey. And thank you for sharing that with us. Like, it gives, I think, a lot of inspiration, too, because I think... I mean, unfortunately, racing is nowadays, I mean, it is all ran by the mighty dollar, right? Like, we talk to some guys that are, like, high-level type stuff that were trying to get a seat. And they're like, look, if you don't have the money, like, and they're talking, like, you know, open-wheel racing stuff. And they're like, everything's paid for now. Like, teams are like, oh, you want to run with us? It's not like even if you have the talent, the people with talent have money, too. So it's, they're paying the manufacturers to run in their cars. Do you think, in this is a little off topic, but just as your personal opinion, we're racing in general, not just endurance racing, but just general racing, um, where it's gotten kind of difficult for anybody just without wealth to go racing essentially at a young age, like everything, even from a young age, you gotta, there's schools you gotta pay for this, you gotta pay for, you gotta get in front of the right people. And the only way you can get in front of them is if you have the right car to be at the right race and all that stuff. In your opinion, has it become very difficult in that sense if you don't come from a big wealthy background to get into racing? Yeah, I think, yeah, unfortunately, you know, you said it, I think it's never, I don't think it was ever easy, but I, I certainly, just from my short experience, mm-hmm. right, when I was younger, I think uh, things were certainly different then, yeah. and I think it was different again 20 years before that. Yeah. I think then talent, you know. Even for uh, you, like it was, it was challenging, like you mentioned earlier in your yeah. story. But at least there was still an opportunity. Like if there was a shot, even though if it was a smaller shot, I almost feel like there is no shot nowadays. Yeah, I think it, it, it certainly, and also the, the, the budgets are so different now. I mean, when, when back in the day, I mean, I don't, re, I don't remember uh, exactly, but I think a season in, in Formula Ford was, was maybe, I don't know, uh, like 120, 150,000, you know, yeah. dollars or euros. Yeah. I mean, shoot, you, what are you going to do with that today? You yeah. know, so like it, it's, right. it's everything like it's everything yeah, is things, so, it's so much. Yeah, everything Everything's is so much more expensive. expensive. Um, yeah, I do. I do think that it's it's a lot harder for uh, for all the young the young guys out there today. Um, also, yeah. times have changed, you know, mm-hmm. like the 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 way some manufacturers spend money is is very different than uh, than 30 years ago as well. It's true. Um, you also have the, um, you know, your, your driver, um, um, the driver categories now, mm-hmm. which, uh, which play into what you can and cannot do in some series, yeah. you know, not all of them. You're right. So there's, yeah, there's a lot of things that are, are yeah, very you different. Yeah, some of these than, gentlemen drivers funding a lot of these teams just so yeah. they have a seat too. I mean, don't get me wrong. These guys are fast, but they also are fast and have money. Yeah. It, as yeah. opposed to somebody who's fast and doesn't have money. Yeah. Well, guess who's going to get in the car? The guy who's fast and has money. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I do believe that, I mean, money only, money only 
get you that you know so far you know yeah. you still you know at the end of the day if you want to if you um if you want to win races then you you need to be fast as well in the car i agree and uh, but what what um and again this is just from my own experience and some of the some of the guys that i've young guys that i've helped out over the years um if you have the talent and you have some money then then the opportunity is there uh -huh. like if you can like i feel like today much like you know a lot of guys my age now that have, have, have done and seen it all like today you can give a young guy good good advice and and if uh, if that young guy has talent and has some money to to you know to put himself or to pay for those first steps into motorsport and put yourself in the right place where you know uh that puts you in front of manufacturers or whatever the, mm -hmm. the situation might be i think um i think there's still opportunity um but yeah coming in with 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 no money like yeah. you know like i did you know 20 you yeah. know 20 years ago 30 years ago that's probably harder now yeah. than 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 it was back then yeah i would agree it's it's a shame you know there's probably a lot of race car drivers we'll never hear of because of it you know because not everybody comes from a you know an opportunity like that but it is what it is i just thought it was interesting because we had that conversation i want to say a few weeks yeah, ago with with somebody that was big into racing and you know knew and they were fast and they just never they just didn't have a dime yeah that was the problem yeah but i, I still I, I guess you know i've said it a few times but but still today i think just who you know and and i feel like today i would be able to help uh and have helped you know mm -hmm. some young guys out uh because you know you know you know what to do and 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 not to do yeah and and so if you have the right talent and there's a difference between there's a lot of guys out there that are talented but there's only a, you know there's yeah. a small percentage that have that and little, you're actually what that you're saying extra. Too, you have the connections which is nice too if you're mentoring somebody or you see somebody with genuine talent you go Hey, and then you make a call or you're happen to be at a track and you're like, Hey, I got this guy. It's not even, I mean, yes, you can, it's about maybe making the call, but it's more so about telling that young guy what to do and not to do. And then hopefully they'll, you know, they'll, uh, they'll appreciate what you're saying and not, mm -hmm. not go the other direction because for sure, you know, 20 years ago, um, would you listen some, to your some, own advice 20 years well, ago exactly that is that is the point <laughs> right yeah. and that's uh <laughs> he doesn't know anything. yeah <laughs> and that's uh, but that's yeah no that's I, i'd say that the people that have listened to uh to that advice over yeah. the last you know seven or something years they've they've done pretty well but that's in every aspect in life yeah. right like i have a younger brother and i and i've tried to share things with him when he was my age and i'm going through stuff and he's like you have no you don't know what you're talking about and i'm like look man finish school you need to do this oh, i know what i'm doing i know what i'm doing yeah and it's i think it's something about being a young man right you almost have to take your own right of passage yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. True, true, true. where you're just like banging your head against the wall until yeah. you're like okay i don't like banging my head against the wall yeah. anymore only here <laughs> there's only so much you know so much opportunity you know like you need to it's important to make the right decisions you know at the right time and yeah because there's always every year there's more young guys coming yeah. and with, with, with a lot of and talent. your windows are smaller and smaller yeah. right like so well thank you for your time Jan yeah. like I know you're a busy guy and it probably pains you to have to sit down this long because you probably <laughs> want to be on the bike you want to be doing something but um, we're glad to get you off your feet for a little bit and glad you spent some time with PCAR Talk yeah thank you guys for coming this was a this was a long time coming yeah absolutely <laughs> we finally yeah we were finally able to do it so yeah thanks for yeah. coming out too of and, course and best of luck in 2021 season i thank know you. it's a month away maybe five weeks away so mm -hmm. you know we'll be we'll see you at rolex right yeah i think there'll be um uh, some announcements here yeah. uh, here soon good looking forward to it awesome. all right thank we'll see you, you guys soon, absolutely thank you thank you so much for listening to this episode of pcar talk Connect with us on Instagram at PCARTalk or online at PCARTalk.com.